Oh my gosh, look at this thing. Wow, he's so fast. This is the most beautiful copperhead I've ever seen. Copperheads are amazing creatures and they hold a special place in my heart, but they can also be some of the trickiest snakes to find owing to their cryptic coloration and behavior. Every fall, I go on a quest to find a good copperhead before the herping season ends. And this year, I decided to start out with what was supposed to be a foolproof method for finding copperheads, flipping stuff. Flipping what? Flipping trash, oh, lots of trash. Man. Sam, what do you think we're gonna find today? Everything. Everything? <laughs> Camille, how are you feeling? What are we finding? Great, I don't know what we're gonna find. Hopefully a snake. Okay. Or a lizard. Lauren, what are we finding today? You know, I'm gonna have no expectations so I don't get disappointed if we find nothing. Oh, that's perfect. Look, fire ants. <laughs> oh my god, more ants. Wow. No, no, there's a beetle. Oh. Yeah. Damn, it's like I haven't seen one of you in a while. And you're nice. Okay, well, we literally just got started herping for today, and we already have three snakes in hand, a baby racer, and then these two. The reason that this individual has a much more blue tint overall, and this one is kind of this glossy, deep black coloration we would expect, is because this one is actually super deep in shed right now. So when we see this kind of milky or blue look on the eyes, it's actually the old skin separating from the new skin, and there's this milky secretion, which is in between the layers, so that it's easier for this snake to get out of the old skin as it grows. Now, you'll notice that both of these racers, for being racers, are actually really calm right now, and that's because this is still really early in the morning, so their body temperature is just really low. So until these get hot later in the day, or if I held them for long enough, they're probably not gonna be super strikey or eccentric like you sometimes get with racers later. Right, these two we'll just put back under this big board I guess. You guys want to like hang out together? You can be roommates. Here you go. Happy snakes. We got all kinds of, we got a this variety shingles. of, yeah shingles. What? But not the disease. Did you find a snake or something down here? No, this is really big man. How do you feel about this mushroom? I'm impressed. I have no idea what species it is. Are you going to taste it? No. Okay, we've got the, what is the sixth thing of the day? This is the rough green snake. Now these are some of the most uniquely adapted snakes here in North Carolina, and they are basically perfectly built for an arboreal lifestyle. So they have this super elongated body, obviously this green coloration, really, really huge eyes to let in tons of light, because probably 95% of a rough green snake's life is going to be spent in a tree. These are primarily insect predators, as you might have guessed, because they're pretty tiny. This is actually a fully grown adult. I know lots of people find green snakes in their yards or gardens, and they're like, oh, must be a baby. No, they actually only get about two to three feet long at maximum size. So this is definitely an adult rough green snake. Now, rough green snakes, even though they are brightly colored, do not have venom or poison of any kind. They are harmless to humans. So if you are lucky enough to spot one of these in the wild, there is no reason to fear them. They're a really easy beginner snake to hold if you want to, or you can just observe them from a distance and appreciate the beautiful and harmless snakes that they are. That is a really cool find. Again, not the target, but come on, they are so cute. After we didn't find any copperheads in the Piedmont, I decided to change up the scenery. Not 10 minutes into exploring this new area, I spotted a familiar pattern poking out from beneath a pine log, oh. and the chase was on. That's beautiful. Hold on, I gotta show this to you guys. This is the biggest copperhead I think I've ever seen in my life. Look at this thing, hang on. Oh my gosh, look at this thing. Oh, this is hard. Wow, he's so fast. Oh, crud. This is impossible. I actually cut the camera at this point and thought I was not going to catch the snake when I decided to give it one last try. And of course, now that the camera was off, it nicely climbed onto the stick. This is literally the most beautiful copperhead I think I've ever seen in my life. This is a beautiful, healthy adult. It has this classic Hershey Kisses shaped patterning. I mean, perfect size. It's got some red on this head here. This is just an absolutely stunning organism. It truly is a remarkable animal right here. Now, copperheads get a bad reputation, but as you can see, there's no reason for these animals to have this really horrible track record that we seem to assign them. 
In fact, copperhead venom is actually pretty mild when compared with the venom of our other venomous snakes. In terms of toxicity, it's not dissimilar to the toxicity found in honeybee venom. There have actually been no documented cases of copperheads lethally biting humans that were not a result of an allergic reaction. So their venom is actually not potent enough to kill you on its own. There'd have to be some kind of other health complication involved with that bite. They are oftentimes very calm, very docile snakes, and I think one of the most beautiful species that we have here in the state of North Carolina. This has been a really beautiful individual to work with. I'm gonna go ahead and set it down back under its log home here, but wow, I'm so glad we got a chance to encounter this, what might be literally the most beautiful copperhead I've ever seen. One of my favorite snakes ever, that's so beautiful. If you enjoyed this amazing copperhead encounter, I think you'd also love to see the incredible Eastern king snake that I found earlier this year. Here is your sneak peek at the species that will be featured in the next episode of The Wild Report. I'll see you next time, but until then, stay curious and keep adventuring everywhere. This is Ben Zeno of The Wild Report, signing out.